So much is different than before COVID-19. It's, it's been extraordinary. It's been scary. It's been challenging. My boss sent me a message and I found myself drafted to run the triage drive through I went downstairs to see what was going on uh, in the drive through and jumped in and started volunteering uh, the next week. I think this is, it's important in multiple ways. I think there's people that otherwise couldn't get tested, they couldn't get educated, they couldn't, they wouldn't have been reached. Our emergency operations center really became our central nervous system during, uh, during the height of, of COVID-19. It was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, staffed by people all across our organization, all across the state. We created a whole new universe here at UAMS. We created a new space to interact with, to communicate with many of our employees. Uh, who used to work on campus are now working from home. Um, what was so great about it is that we did it so quickly. We have fundamentally changed uh, how we do things operationally here at, at UAMS for reducing the transmission of COVID-19. Every single person that comes onto the UAMS campus is screened. One of the very important things that we did very quickly was bring up to par all of our frontline healthcare workers and the appropriate PPE to keep them safe. Well, the stories that I've heard are about how those fears and anxieties were relieved. We had a young man come through whose uncle had expired with COVID in an area hospital. He was told to come get tested for exposure because he was also becoming symptomatic. Um, we had a social worker that came down and in normal life, outpatient social workers do not dress out in PPE. But Ruth Faisal dressed out in PPE, got right beside his car and spent probably 20, 30 minutes with him. We pulled that vehicle off to the side and really made a difference for that young man. I've had a, a lady that came through and her spouse was in the hospital in the ICU and likely was going to die. And she was really sad, obviously. And just talking to her and just reassuring her and giving her support and validating her and thanking her for doing the precautions, she was so grateful for that and she was appreciative. A woman in her 50s, uh, she drove in, she seemed fairly quiet and reserved, and stoic. Uh, I asked her questions about uh, her exposure and uh, got to the end of my interview and I said that uh, we needed to test her for COVID. She broke down in tears. Uh, she said, I don't want to die. And was able to spend a few minutes visiting with her and talking with her about the fact that COVID is not a death sentence. Uh, she was very thankful. We have taken the philosophy that UAMS needs to be the safest place in our community for anybody that needs to be in a healthcare environment. COVID first was introduced, it was, you know, pretty scary. Um, I will say that everybody has really risen to the challenge. Um, our resilience has been challenged a little bit because, you know, nobody's ever worked through a pandemic before. Rewards are, of course, when people get better. It's very, very difficult when you have somebody who is passing and the only way their family can be there is through a FaceTime video. That's really hard. Our very first patient here, it was kind of a tearjerker because he was terrified. He called every single family member that he could think of, everyone to say, hey, they're about to put me on this ventilator. I don't know if I'm gonna come out for this or not. But that part was probably mo the most emotional part that I've had so far. You get the medical providers, medical care staff that unfortunately do get coronavirus. And of course, all patients are near and dear to our hearts, but those that caught this virus while they're doing their job, it makes it really, really hard. Um, especially when they don't have a good outcome. We had a patient who was admitted here who I actually worked with previously, who was a nurse at another hospital. And she was admitted here in our ICU and subsequently passed away from COVID. It was that kind of moment that for all of us as, as healthcare workers, to not allow her family to come and not be there with her in her last minutes so it was myself and another anesthesiologist who had also worked closely with her, who were there with her for the end of her life. 
I think about that often because so many of our frontline healthcare workers have to fill that gap and fill that void. So you have to say, well, I have to be your family for now. I have to be that one that's gonna hold your hand and if you wanna talk, and he held my hand until he couldn't hold it no more. And that was very emotional. When coronavirus hit, my husband and I made the decision that he and our children would go move to um, a different residence just to prevent them from getting the virus. And they're working Monday through Friday, no holidays, no weekends, no evenings, and they willingly change their schedule. They miss out on some of their own special family time. The challenge was trying to manage my family needs and my needs and the need of the community, but this is what I was driven to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. Every individual that works at UAMS has shown uh, who they are during these difficult times. The people of Arkansas are in good hands. Uh, that Team UAMS uh, stood up to the challenges uh, and that we did that in part because we got tremendous support from the community, uh, from people who bought us food and, and sent thank yous, but also the support that we got from the board members uh, getting us through a, a situation that um, really has hampered many academic medical centers across the country and, and we've done well. The community is really grateful and usually they're always like, thank you, thank you so much for being here, thank you for doing this, thank you for taking care of us. I, and I don't know if it's because we're one of the bigger hospitals here in the state or if we've taken care of a family member or something like that, but if they see, you know, me in my UAMS apparel, whether it be my name badge or a just a t-shirt. You know, I have people go out their way to say, thank you for your service. I could not be more proud to be a member of Team UAMS, part of the UAMS family. Uh, the best of people come out in the worst of times, and that's certainly true at, at UAMS. I didn't do this for any other reason, but it was the right thing to do. And they do it all with a smile on their face while they're in the front line, testing people, talking to people all day, every day. Heroes do work here. Your heroes always work here, but I think this has been their time to shine. Anybody that's part of a community that's working to try to keep us healthy or to improve the health of those that are not healthy, that's a hero. I mean, to me, a hero is somebody that does something above and beyond what is expected and what they're called to do. And you can walk through the hallways every day in here and see that happen. When I think of heroes, I think of a, a heroic team. Sometimes it's easy for people who pass through here to see our frontline caregivers as the heroes, or our, our educators as, as the heroes. It's really everybody. No matter what you do here, you're here in the hospital where we're caring for COVID patients, so we're all heroes, regardless of what your job title is. I would say heroes work here every day. Uh, and that was before COVID-19 and will continue after COVID-19 is over.